Hi everyone, my name is Patrick Sisch and uh, I'm a techno producer. And uh, together with Per Hammer, I run uh, Euromix, which is a uh, mix and mastering service that specializes in house and techno music. Uh, we wanted to share some of the uh, tools and techniques that we use when we uh, mix and master other people's music. So big thanks to Music Tech for inviting us to this channel. In this video, I'm going to share with you a trick that will really work wonders on your kick and your baseline mixing. And uh, it's a trick that's based on an old technique that I used to use, uh, where I used analog high pass uh, resonant filters uh, and limiters to achieve a really beefy bass without losing any headroom in my mix. And uh, I've turned this technique uh, into a uh, rack device in Ableton Live uh, that we use daily when we are mixing and mastering for our clients. And this device is called the Euromix Hyperbase and uh, you can download it for free from the Music Tech website, just check the link below. Uh, and uh, I'm gonna show you in this video some practical uh, ways of using it, so enjoy! Alright, first of all, big thanks for all the support so far. We are really, really happy for all the love you've shown our tutorials and free rack devices. And if you haven't checked them out already, go to Euromix on YouTube and check them out. This tutorial will be all about bass, and a lot of it. Especially when you are mixing house and techno, you want that really gooey, rumbling, warm space going. But the problem is that when you mix the bass with just an EQ, uh, especially a shelf EQ or uh, also a bell EQ, you are losing a lot of headroom in your mix because you are raising the volume. and. Uh, you're also bringing up a lot of sub-frequencies, uh, which might be unnecessary for your mix down, and it also eats your headroom. So, I'm gonna show you here how you are getting uh, a lot, like insane amounts of bass, but keeping the headroom intact in your mix. And remember, it's really easy to go overboard with this technique, so you really want to take it easy, and you might want to use headphones or a subwoofer to check your mix. All right, so with that said, uh, we're gonna go through the project here. It's, uh, once again, a remix I'm working on for a producer called uh, Johannes Dora. Uh, we have the tracks here, we have a kick drum. It's, uh, I'm gonna turn these off. It's an 808 kick going into a couple of send effects, some distortions, delay, blah, blah, blah. Uh, <laughs> uh, we have, uh, Baseline and the lead here from my modular synthesizer. Uh, we have some bells. We have a very small shaker. We have some more hi-hats. We have some more hi -hats, even more hi-hats. We have a clap here. And then we have a lead. And I'm gonna turn the lead off so it won't so you can hear me. <laughs> uh, Alright, so I think my kick and my bass line are a little bit weak. So uh, I'm gonna use the hyper bass. Uh, and I'm gonna add it here on the kick. And I'm gonna add it on the bass. So the hyper bass is a uh, resonant high pass filter with the limiter. And it helps you to find and isolate the important frequencies in your bass and make sure that you are not just fooled by raising the volume of the bass, like when you are EQing. So the hyperbass is about finding the most suitable frequency to boost. And you do that, it does that by making sure that the volume level uh, of the channel stays the same uh, with the limiter. And which frequency that sounds the best? Well, that you will find by sweeping uh, the cutoff frequency and the resonance. Uh, and it's normally the fundamental frequency of the sound that sounds the best, but 
it can be other frequencies as well that will give uh, fun results. So, how do you use this? Well, first of all, you need to make sure that the volume stays the same. So, you need to check the overall levels of your channels where you're going to use it. So, on here, the kick drum, it's minus 8.5. And what you do is you set the peak level here to minus 8.5, so it matches the channel. And then we're going to turn the frequency up, we're going to turn the resonance up, uh, and then we're going to engage it. And now we have a very high cut, so I'm going to sweep it down. Ooh, yeah, it's nice there. Very nice. Uh, and maybe a little bit more resonance. I can turn up the resonance, you can hear it. It gives a lot of bass. Maybe there. As you can see, the volume stays the same. It's still minus 8.5 because it's going into a limiter that limits the volume to minus 8.5. Let's do the same with the bass. Let's check the overall level. We have minus 11. Yeah, let's put it to minus, minus 11. Right, I'm gonna do the same, put the frequency up, and then we're gonna sweep it down. Alright, so you will hear here you have the second harmonic overtone. It sounds alright, but we're gonna try the fundamental, which is one octave down from 90, it will be 45. Let's turn the resonance up a little bit, maybe. Maybe something like that. And then let's check the release time, which is the release time of the limiter. We take it down here. It will distort a bit. And you can hear it better if I do it on the bass drum. If I take, you can hear the limiter distorting. So let's take up the release time a bit. Maybe around there on the bass drum. And let's put the release time. I think it sounds good there. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, map uh, some buttons to the rack device so we can just turn it off and now if you check the master level it's now we have around minus 1.7 and then i'm gonna turn off the hyper bass what do we have yeah minus yeah minus one we still have the same peak level but the bass is now limited and boosted at some very, very nice frequencies, I think. So, uh, we haven't lost any headroom really in the mix. Let's see, let's turn them on again so you can hear the difference. Now it's off. And it's on. It's almost like we got an extra octave below, but it's not an extra octave, it's just uh, a resonant high pass filter boosting the fundamental frequencies and then limiting the sounds. So we really get the most uh, impact out of our sounds with this method. And to show you uh, really how efficient this plugin is in keeping the headroom, I've placed a limiter on the master here, which is uh, off. You can see I have an, uh, a loudness meter here, the Waves uh, WM that shows LUFS. And I have a box angle span that shows the frequency spectrum. So I'm going to turn this limiter on and you will see what happens. As you can see, we are really effortless 
Uh, after test we're going up to minus 8, I can push it further without any problem. You see here we are now at minus 8. And I mean, the limiter doesn't uh, do much more than 3 decibels of gain reduction. And we have a very, very full bass. Uh, and a mix that is very easy to compress further. And I'm not like uh, being a loudness war advocate or, or anything here. I, I just wanted to show you how much headroom you can save when you are using this trick. So, in the second example, I'm gonna show you how you actually can uh, apply this plugin to uh, your master. And here it's really, really important not to go overboard because there can be a lot of messy uh, sub frequencies messing up your mix here. So, we just want to warm it up a little bit. So, let's apply it to the master. And let's put the peak level to minus one and let's engage it. And let's sweep it down and try to find the frequency that sounds the best here. Okay, I think it's really warm and nice around here. And as I turn the resonance up here, you can hear that the entire mix is starting to pump. And that's because uh, everything is, the entire master is going into a limiter. So, uh, what you can do here is to use uh, our uh, rack device, the crossover. If I just apply it here, the crossover allows you to put uh, effects on only parts of the frequency spectrum. So what we're doing here essentially is creating a frequency limited hyperbase. So if I just take the hyperbase, put it into here, where you can insert the effects, and then I turn the high frequency limit down. Let's see. have to turn the peak level down a little bit as well, let's see. And remember, even though everything is allowed when you're producing techno, uh, except for maybe going to red in digital, uh, there is such a thing as too much bass. And to be honest, before applying this trick, um, I would be really careful and make sure that I have proper listening in the bass frequencies. Uh, otherwise, this trick can really destroy your mix. And as you can hear, uh, we are we got rid of the pumping because the limiter and the hyperbase, the filters, are no, now only working on the uh, low frequencies. So this is a really convenient way uh, of using it. You can, this one, the crossover, you can download from uh, our website, euromix.net, and use it with any plugin. All right, so this was it for this time. Uh, go to Music Tech, download the rack device, and get that bass pumping. Uh, I hope that you find this useful because it's a trick that both me and Per Hammer use every day when we are mixing, and uh, it really works wonders for the bass. All right, so thank you for watching, and uh, stay tuned for more tutorials and rack devices.